Hello, my name is Paul McSweeney, and I'm delighted to welcome our colleagues, Dr. Catherine O'Mahony, Director of CERTL, and Clean O'Callaghan, Project Lead for the IUA Enhancing Digital Le Teaching and Learning Project from the Centre for Digital Education, for a conversation on how to get started teaching remotely in the coming year. To start off, I would like to acknowledge the huge efforts made by colleagues in schools and colleges in terms of learning and teaching since the sky fell down on all of us on March the 12th. If you consider where we started from then, the progress we made has been amazing. It's hard to know where we are going in the future, but I think the rapid adoption of online systems will lead to at least some lasting innovation in teaching and assessment. Whatever it will be, teaching in September will have to be different because of social distancing guidelines. However, we are a campus-based university, and this change is only for now. But we are asking you to do something different, and that is to teach remotely with much, much less face-to-face -face engagement. And this video is aimed at those who do not know where to start and will provide at least some guidance for planning your teaching and will signpost resources uh, to engage. But the first step, Canvas. Canvas is our virtual uh, campus or our virtual learning environment or VLE and is the primary space of learning and teaching for all UCC staff and students. Indeed, in many ways, I suspect next year UCC will stand for University College Canvas. So Catherine, what advice would you give staff regarding how to use Canvas for teaching? So I begin by echoing the centrality of Canvas and the importance of knowing how to use this VLE. Many of you have already engaged with Canvas, both as part of your teaching, but also in participating in staff development activity. And the Teaching with Canvas course is an essential starting point, both for academic and administrative staff. All students will be directed towards Canvas, will complete their orientation on Canvas, and will be automatically registered on their module pages on Canvas. So your means of engaging with them is through the same space. There is a multitude of things you can do on Canvas, such as sending messages, uploading videos, documents, images, creating spaces for discussion, engaging students in assessment, giving feedback, etc. So it's really important that you're consistent in your design, layout and your mode of communicating with the student. Um, students need to know what is expected of them and the order in which they need to engage with the materials and the content. But this can be overwhelming, so start simple. Think about how you normally divide up your module. You may have an orientation piece first, followed by engaging students with different themes or topics. Use this original structure that you have to your module to start building or developing your Canvas space. And remember, support is at hand. There are weekly Canvas training provided by the Centre for Digital Education, and this can be on a one-to-one -one or a programme level consultation. So start early and reach out for some support. So, in many ways, the bare bones of remote teaching is as follows. We'd recommend that you pre-record uh, parts of your lectures and post them on Canvas, that you live stream other elements of your, of your module using Microsoft Teams through Canvas, and do face-to-face -face teaching where guidelines allow. So, Cleana, is that the advice for staff? Yes, Paul, that's exactly it. We recommend a combined approach where possible. So pre-record very short videos, ideally around five to seven minutes long or thereabouts as you see appropriate, aligned with your to topics or themes, and then upload onto your Canvas course. You can build in interactions and activity on Canvas, such as quizzes, class discussions, and you can collaborate together on a document. So there's lots of ways that you can ensure there is activity and interactivity on your Canvas course. You can use MS Teams for any live teaching or live streaming, as you say. So this is a UCC to tool and has UCC support resources available and is integrated into Canvas. Once you create an MS Teams event on Canvas for your students, you can generate a link which is connected directly to Teams, which will be automatically sent to all your registered students and can be posted on your Canvas page. Many of you have been using MS Teams to engage with colleagues during the past few months extensively and so are much more used to using Teams than you would have been before. It works really well for more interactive modes of teaching, such as running small group activities, uh, tutorials, and also for live Q&A sessions. We do recommend pre-recorded audio or video as much as possible uh, for engaging with your students in terms of core content. 
Um, however, on MS Teams students in particular, they like the chat function in MS Teams. And we have received feedback from the Students Union recently that they enjoy using Teams more than other platforms, which is fantastic to hear back. So Canvas is the virtual campus and MS Teams supports live interactive modes of teaching. But there is a third and final tool, and that's Panopto. And Panopto isn't just a chunk of hardware in the lecture theatre. It can be used on your home laptop or PC from your office or indeed from your phone and is really a useful tool for recording audio and video for the Canvas site. So, Kleena, what supports are available for people who are unfamiliar with Panopto? Thank you, Paul. Well, Panopto is the recommended tool for recording your lectures, for pre-recording your lectures. It integrates seamlessly into Canvas and is a UCC supported tool. So you can simply click on Panopto while on Canvas. This loads the Panopto recorder and you can select previously recorded content or begin recording content, uh, either new, audio or existing. We, re we realize that a lot of people use PowerPoint and record audio over PowerPoint. However, this is not ideal from the student perspective as it does not integrate seamlessly into Canvas and they would have to download it, which would take extra bandwidth um, and may cause problems. So ideally, we strongly encourage all staff to use Panopto in terms of pre-recording their content. There is also an excellent eight minute video on using Panopto, which we highly recommend. You will find this on the AVMS UCC site or also on our own Keep Teaching and Getting Started pages within the UCC website, which we strongly recommend. So just a few thoughts to finish up. Um, this really video is really intended just to be a simple guide and certainly not in any way prescriptive. Uh, some people may be familiar with other approaches which may work just as well. But what we are generally suggesting is that people pre-record parts of their lectures and deliver other parts by live streaming through MS Teams or indeed in classrooms if guidelines allow. But whatever happens, consistency is of huge importance for students. Staff will need to prepare in advance, and but there is a lot of training and support available for staff. It helps them in this area. It probably would be wise to scenario plan for a second surge um, where we may have to go online 100% for at least a proportion of the time. And finally, don't let perfection be the enemy of the good. Oftentimes, simple and quite straightforward approaches can be surprisingly effective. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and to thank in particular my colleagues Catherine O'Mahony and Clean O'Callaghan and I wish you all the very best of luck for the coming academic year.